Hanging out again with Tyler Murray. This is the second of three that we're doing to teach you a little bit about these uh, dirt car sportsmen. This is a 602 crate engine. And again, that is just the part number. That is not the cubic inches. It is not a horsepower rating. It is, I believe, 355 cubic inches, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, Tyler? Uh, three. 50, I think. Okay, so it's not 30 over? No. Okay. It's standard bore, they should be, I, I think. Okay, about the 360, 365, 370 at the most, depending on which year it is, right? Something like that. I couldn't even tell you. You can look it up on Google. I just yeah, it's in that range. Yep. I know if you're making 380, I know that's kind of the number where they say, ah, that's a little too much, maybe. So uh, you saw the valve covers that are on here, of course. That's how you can tell a crate right away. Uh, I have a street version. It just has the chrome uh, valve covers and the chrome timing chain cover as well. But we're going to talk about what actually comes on a crate motor and what does not. The biggest thing we're noticing right away, there's no carburetor on there, but you've got one right there. Which yep. is it? That is a just a Holley 4150-650 CFM, and that's, that is our base model carburetor that's what dirt is makes everyone else around so that's that's about cut dry there's a there's a ton of different guys that do a little few different things to them which you can buy them from straight from holly or you can buy them from some guy that reworked it or at the local speed shop as well yep. aluminum intake does come with it because i remember when i got mine for my camaro it did not so yep. that so comes this, with it this is the older engine this has still got the break off bolts this yes this is the bolt everybody talked about years ago that they said oh you can't get those but turns out yes you could and there's one of those on each side of the intake so in theory um you shouldn't be able to get that off right nope so there's here on the uh, timing cover then you have some on the oil pan and on the cylinder heads themselves. Oh yeah, so, you, can see, you can see it right there. Okay. So, so these are sealed right up. This one, is, this one still needs to be sent out to be dirt sealed for this upcoming season. This is. And how much does that run? I think it's right about twelve hundred dollars if you can find anyone to do it now. Yeah, because a lot of times some of the engine builders were requesting you got those in the fall yeah. so that they would have time. Because There's... And again, the theory with these bolts, as you can see, it's round. So you really can't put anything on there uh, that would be able to get that off. So that's what they mean by sealed with the bolts. Okay, this stuff on the front did not come with it too, though, did it? Nope. So it'll come with no fuel pump. It'll come with no water pump or pulleys or anything. So it'll pretty much just be distributor and uh, complete engine from GM and so this will it'll come with spark plugs and stuff like that but besides that it is it's bare and you are you need to put your own pulleys or your own water pump and a lot of guys will just buy a complete engine from one of our certified build or certified resellers and stuff like that because they have to be paste sealed they have to be dirt car sealed and they pretty much have to be, uh, it's got to be a vault. Okay. Just about. If you, you can't go into your bank and go into the vault and get your money, so <laughs> you can't go into your engine and change your rods. Gotcha. And that's what those bolts are to prevent. Of course, for a while there, people were going up through the pan, so that was a different deal. And there's one thing on the back that's missing also. We would call it a flywheel, but you guys don't call it a flywheel, right? Yep. So th this is called a Burt Drive. This well, we run a inboard starter, so our Burt Bell housing would bolt here and our starter would be here rather than a standard small block Chevy. Right okay, all right. So a standard small block Chevy will have a big old flywheel on it and what was cool is they made it so the starter would come in here and mesh in, mm -hmm. and we could run. And the teeth on the starter match up with the teeth on that, right? Yep. So and just turn the crank and there we go, right? That's just a starter. Okay. And that took some rotating mass off the back of the crankshaft, which in oh, racing. Makes sense. Okay. You don't, why spin something this big if we can figure out a way to spin something small? Yeah, because the flywheels are big. They're about the size, for those of you older folks like me, it's about the size of an old 33 record. Uh, yep. They were pretty big yeah. uh, back in the day. Now, on my car, we had to do a high torque starter because I know like when these motors get hot and you got to start yep. it again, and a lot of times they do not like to start. Do you run a high torque starter? Yep. So I, I actually, the last two cars I've got have been previous big block cars. So they... They, they came with it already. Yeah. Okay. And, but what is... One of the main things that makes it harder to start is the ignition timing is locked out. So it is set at 34 degrees where like a regular old school car, it would retard itself when you went to fire it up. And then once the 
gear or once the plates and stuff advanced it would advance a little bit just so it was easier to start easier on starters and mm -hmm. stuff like that well i also heard too a hot motor is tougher to start right yes yes why do you know um, i might have gone over tyler's head on that one but i figured i'd try uh, <laughs> what do you guys know put it in the put it in the comments on this one too because we do interviews with the heat winners at canandaigua yep and a lot of times after they shut the car off it does not want to fire it gets brr, 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 yep. it does a little bit of that and then it just goes so big battery is this is a, a high power battery is, is also a key right yep okay we're going to come in here because i wanted to show you something that changed uh, in recent years from especially back when i was a kid and we all had hot rods notice how small the belts are um why so this is this is the bicknowell seven millimeter setup and this this is just so you're same thing with the flywheel the engineers and guys like that, they just figured out it'd be more feasible to spin something smaller than about this wide. Just like we were talking about, about with the... Yeah, with the flywheel. Yeah, okay. So that's in uh, Jones, which this fan is a Jones fan, and these are just Bicknell. This is the Bicknell setup. But Jones actually has a uh, cog system, so if any of you guys have ever watched like a top fuel dragster, mm -hmm. the belt for the superchargers... It's like two, three inches wide. Yeah. It, now the belts aren't that wide. I'm just saying the cog system. It's it's teeth in a belt, oh, almost like a chain, like modern day Harley Davidsons and stuff like that. Them are all cog belt okay. driven, so that's that prevents slippage and stuff like that, and they're easier to rotate. Now this is the shroud, okay? And this does not come. Do you make your own shrouds, or can you buy those? Nope. You most ri like uh, if you bought a radiator, that it you could buy a shroud that is completely. Okay fittable or you, you could make one this you put this in a slip roller or something like that and get the radius on here and then just little sheet metal fabrication and of course you can so and i talked to a lot of guys in the stock car regs yep uh, because it's not as you know they tell me that a lot of times they have overheating problems and problems with the shroud biggest thing the fan has to be inside the shroud to some degree right because if you look at it from the side here you yep. can see it's tucked under there pretty good i think i think dad usually sets that about inch and a half inside the shroud don't quote me but that's more of him i haven't really got into that stuff but mm -hmm. i, I but think but you don't want it too far back obviously no, then, right because then it then doesn't cool the radiator right yep all the air you're circulating is going to circulate this and not push it to the radiator so that's so it'd be like pretty much taking the shroud off and not running the shroud. There you go. Hope you guys learned something here. Big thanks to Tyler, man. Again, thank you very much. And big thanks to Jaden back there, too. He's been helping us out a lot, too. So hope you guys learned something. we got one more tomorrow. We're going to talk valve springs on Monday. I wanted to do this one, two, three, like we did with Ronnie Davis. Teach you stuff. I'm learning a lot. So, Tyler, thank you so much for your time, man. Yes, I really sir. appreciate we'll, it. Uh, we'll come back and we'll yeah. show some more stuff once we get some more progress on the car. And maybe once we get it on the scales, we can go over some uh, scaling procedures. Hope you guys are learning a lot, man. I am. Thanks again, man. Yes, sir.